one weapon more than any other dominated warfare in the Norman period. The crossbow. Fourteenth-century crossbows like this were the culmination of centuries of development. With limbs made of steel, they were incredibly powerful. But earlier Norman crossbows had limbs made of wood. There was a limit to how powerful these wooden bows could be. So the idea that Norman crossbows were a powerful weapon is really a myth. Despite this, they were effective at medium range, and that was enough in battle. Drawing the bow repeatedly took a lot of strength. Thankfully, help was at hand. A crossbowman spanned his weapon with a device called a belt and claw. This gave him extra leverage, allowing him to use his back and legs to draw the string. Crossbowmen were vulnerable on a battlefield, so they carried large shields called pavises, so they could hunker down behind, load, pop up, shoot, and then duck back down again to reload. Crossbows were accurate, took less training, and used cheaper ammunition than the longbow. Most importantly, you could wait to take your shot, so they were perfect for siege situations. To protect crossbowmen when they were defending castles, they used specially built wooden galleries called hoardings. But shooting down towards an approaching enemy presented its own problems. How to stop the bolt from falling off the crossbow before it could be shot? What they did is just place the thumb loosely on the top of the bolt, which is just enough with light pressure to hold it in place. Around 1200, the Norman wooden crossbow was superseded by a new design, the composite bow. With limbs made from horn and sinew, they could be made more compact than a wooden bow. And they could deliver up to four times the punch. They were, however, more expensive. So whether on the battlefield or the castle rampart, simple wooden crossbows remained the main weapon of the day.